Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 085. This is section 1.8, Introduction to Integers. Now, before we get started here, we've already introduced whole numbers. And we deal with whole numbers a lot in everyday life. But we also deal with integers quite often. Uh, integers are essentially the negative values or the negative numbers uh, that we use. And we do experience them every day in the real world. As an example, maybe some of us at some point uh, have overdrawn their checking account. And the bank shows your statement, you're at a negative amount. That means you have to do something just to get back to 0. To have nothing, you have to pay something forward, which means that you're in the negatives. And we deal with that all the time. Maybe you receive a bill in the mail. And you know, they show you in the itemization that you have these charges. And you paid this amount. But you paid more than you were charged. You'll have a credit balance. Well, that credit balance in that itemization actually shows up at a negative. For the company that's sending you that bill, that says to them it's a negative against them because they owe you money. So we do deal with integers every day on a daily basis. So the first thing we're going to do is look at the number line. Like I said, we've already introduced whole numbers in a previous section. If we look at a number line, well, our integers are the whole numbers, but it also includes values less than 0. Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 5, and so on. This would continue on for infinity. Just like this, we know that these numbers, the whole numbers, continue on for infinity. Uh, one thing we have to be aware of is 0. Now, these values we call positive. Anything to the right of 0 is positive. Anything to the left of 0 on a number line is negative. <coughs> Excuse me. If we look at 0, well, what is 0? Is it positive or negative? Well, we have to sometimes consider it to be neither. But we can also consider it to be both. Because if I add 0, I get the same result as if I subtracted 0. So I can call it a positive or a negative. So looking at our number line, let's just get a feel for where we find values on a number line. So we're going to graph these values, 0, 8, and negative 3. So we'll start left to right. I'm going to find 0 on my number line. Well, here 0 is our reference point. So I'm going to graph it. And to graph a number, we just put a nice solid dot. It says, this is the value we're at. To do 8. Essentially, we look at each tick mark. Well, each tick mark represents an integer, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. If we're to the left of 0, it's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, and so on. Each tick mark represents one uh, distance from the next. So if we're starting at 0, our reference point, and I want to go to 8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here's the value 8, and that's where I'm going to graph the value of 8. What about negative 3? Well, that negative tells me immediately where I need to focus. It says I have to be left of 0. So I'm going to go left of 0 three spaces, or three tick marks, 1, 2, 3. This would be negative 3. And so I put a nice dot there. So we're able to identify where these values are on the number line. Negative values are to the left of 0. Positive values are to the right. All right, let's move on uh, to. Another concept, hopefully, hopefully we've seen this before. We're looking at greater than and less than. This is the symbol that says greater than. So a value on the left side would be greater than a value on the right side. That's how we read that symbol. Uh, and from time to time, we might see a line underneath one of these. That just means that it could also be equal to. Less than means the value to the left is less than the value to the right. And that's when we use that symbol. Now, um, when it comes to these, one way to remember uh, which value is going to be bigger or which value is going to be smaller is this larger end of this arrow always points to the larger value. The smaller end of this points to the smaller value. So if we look at this, we're going to do some examples. We're going to insert the symbol that is appropriate for these sets of numbers. If we look at these two numbers, 3 and a negative 5, so this one's to the right of 0, this one's to the left of 0, well, which value is greater? Well, obviously, if we're talking about things in the real world like money, having a positive value is greater than a negative value. You wouldn't want to owe money. 
So if we look at this, we know a positive value is going to be greater than a negative value. So as we read it left to right, 3 is greater than negative 5. Look at the next example. This is a little bit different. We have to think about it, maybe visualize a number line. We have negative 2, negative 9. Which is the greater value or the lesser value? Well, if we think about a number line, this is only two spots from 0. Yes, it's negative. We're to the left of 0. And maybe we owe 2 of something. Well, this here is left of 0, but it's further to the left of 0. So further to the left of 0, well, that's more in debt, more of the negative. So negative 2 is closer to 0 than negative 9. This is further to the left. So the negative 2 is greater than negative 9. I would rather owe someone $2 than owe them $9. So this means I'm closer to the good if, if we say positives are good. If we look at these two values, it's very similar to this one. 6 and negative 6, well, obviously 6 is greater than negative 6 because on a number line, it is to the right of that value. This is to the right of 0. This is to the left of 0. 6 is greater than negative 6. But this is a special case that I want to just direct your attention to. 6 and negative 6 are what we call opposites because they are on the opposite side of 0. So if they have different signs but are the same numerical value, 6 and 6, the ones to the left, ones to the right, these are called opposites. So let's take a look at these opposites. Here's an example, 6 and negative 6. Now, I had mentioned that 0 is a little bit special. It can be thought of as positive or negative. But if we have 0, what is its opposite? Well, it doesn't have an opposite. Because this is a case where we think of it as, well, it's neither positive or negative. When we say opposites, we're saying equal distance from 0. Well, if we think about that, how far is 0 from 0? 0. It's 0 spaces or tick marks away on the number line. So it is what it is. It does not have an opposite because that's our reference point. Let's look at negative 10. Well, what's the opposite of that? What number is 10 units away from 0, but instead of being to the left, it's to the right? Well, easy enough, you just change its sign. Negative 10's opposite is positive 10. 81, its opposite is negative 81. They're the same distance from 0. One's to the left, and one's to the right. So this has been part one of Introduction to Integers. Uh, please stay tuned for part two. Thank you for watching.